Hey everybody, Hello. welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 21. Our, hey Igor, welcome to the stream. Hello everybody on Instagram. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 21, our final installment in our dark, dark tea, tea uh, foray. Our foray into dark tea is coming to an end today mm -hmm. and next week we're going to be getting into oolong tea, but before that can happen, let's finish up Absolutely. with that. So be, I guess we, so dark tea has been hmm, one, two, three weeks total. Pretty short section compared yes. to green tea. Absolutely. Um, it started with an overview of dark tea two weeks ago. Last week we covered Shempuar and Shupuar. And today we're going to cover a few other dark teas, Liu Bao Cha, Fujuan, mm -hmm. and a new one to me. Lao Paka. Lao Paka. So yes. I'm super excited to talk to you guys about that. Um, but first, let's hear about our tea and let us know what you guys are brewing. Yes. What's on your tea table? Today we're going to brew a lot, a big chunk of uh, Fujuan. So this is just a piece of it. Hey JS, and I'm going to I'm going to show you a close up here with a little clip I took of it. Mm -hmm. So you can see Fujuan named for the brick. Um, yeah, you can still see Jen up in the corner there. That's perfect. Yeah. And you can kind of see the gold flower. I'm going to come in close there and show you the gold flower mm. up close. Now that had been open for a while, so it's still pretty... Just to show Instagram people, maybe? Yeah, show the Instagram people. Instagram people, head on over to oh, YouTube okay. if you want to get the full you experience. You can see on YouTube, yeah. I'm breaking the brick open to expose the inside of the brick. So you notice that the outside of the brick didn't have any Jinhua. The inside is just replete with the stuff, full of Jinhua. And that's what we're going to be drinking. And uh, you can get more info about the tea on our website, which I'm showing there on YouTube as well. Um, the link is in the description down below. Uh, we've got a uh, detailed description. Uh, we've got all kinds of information about the origin and how to brew the tea on that mm -hmm. website as well. So hop on over there if you want to learn more about the Fujuan or grab some for yourself. Absolutely. And don't forget to tell us what you're drinking today. Yes, we'd love to Are know you having some dark what tea is in your cup. today is the theme. Yes, dark, if it, especially dark tea. I see my tea flow pop in on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pico Gavani, Alan C. Keen has joined on Instagram. So hello everybody on Instagram. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown. This mm -hmm. is uh, Sunday Tea Book. What is Sunday Tea Book all about? This is where Jen and I take a book, an article or a paper and that is uh, full of great information but is written in Chinese only or maybe the translation, if it exists, is a little bit dubious. Yep. We sit down with you guys and we go over it and we translate it together. And the reason we do that is because over the last five, six years with Jen, I have learned so much by diving into those kinds of details. Um, you guys suggested that we do something like this. We thought, oh, that's a good idea. And once we started doing it, I realized this is better than a good idea. This is a great idea. <laughs> absolutely. An absolutely great idea. We've been loving it. And I'm really excited to j dive into the last installment of Dark Tea today. Yes. So we're continuing uh, with the book, uh, China Tea, written by my mom. This book uh, has English and Chinese mm -hmm. version. The English is the, a little bit uh, not as good, not as clear for, uh, uh, for English speaker. Uh, yeah. so, um, but the content is so great. It's uh, basic with a little bit of expansion on yep. almost every aspect of tea. And uh, it also helps us lay the uh, foundation for our future reading because uh, in terms of Chinese teas, there are so many like confusion, so many terms, mis terms and, names, mm. uh, mis or different uh, translations. So um, going through this very a basic but very interesting uh, book not only provides you the Chinese angle of Chinese tea but right. also help us to be on the same page right. for our future reading. That's right. So um, what's going to happen with the book as we dive into it is I'm going to bring it right up on the screen. So all you Instagram folks, if you want to jump on over to YouTube and follow along, that'd be awesome. We're not going to stay on Instagram except for a few more minutes just to explain this. I'm going to bring it up on the page as usual. I'm going to read through the English translation. I'll give you my impression of it, what I got out of it. I'm trying to play the uh, new to tea role. And in many cases, it just comes very naturally to me. Um, there's lots of intricacies I'm still learning about. So I'm going to play the new to tea role and try and see what I got out of it. Jen's going to clear up any misconnections. And what happens sometimes is there's something completely not translated or just, or it's actually, I understood it, 
but I actually understood it wrong because the translation was a little bit twisted. You know how that can happen. And if you don't, stay tuned and you'll see maybe. Um, so anyway, Instagram, I'm going to grab you guys over here. Whoa, whoa, shaky. And we're going to, I'm going to head over to YouTube. So hopefully we'll see you over there. And uh, until next time, keep steeping on Instagram live uh, X. Odeas, join us. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. I don't know why my first uh, reaction was like, oh, isn't this morning? <laughs> that probably explains why we're a little bit late. Right. All good. And he's, okay. uh, he or she is drinking some Gimmaicha today, which I started this morning for some study. Right, yeah, oh, Jamesha. Nice. I think that has toasty, toasty rice in it. Yeah, mm. I love it. Love that. Toasty, love that flavor. We have a really overcast, like cloudy weather. Gloomy. Gloomy. It's typical late autumn, right? We've had several days of gloomy. It says gloomy. there's a snow coming, like a 10, 15 centimeter of snow. Slow. I mean snow. That's about five or six grams of Fujuan there. I got you a nice big guy one. I think we might need a bigger one than what we had. And this is a day tea. This will day tea? Mm. A day tea, like whole day. Oh, a day tea. Yeah, yeah. I put a good amount because we, uh, we tend to have a lot of fun here. So, and Igor is, uh, he's all teed out for the day, which is totally, I totally get that. It happens to me sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we're going to um, get the tea brewing and dive in to old tea. Uh, old tea. Old <laughs> Laupaka. Dark tea. Dark tea. Old tea. <laughs> so as Jen showed, there is... Um, there is the China Tea Book by Jen Li Wu. Her mom, my mother-in-law, our tea consultant. We went through all the green tea section here that you see, and we're now into the dark tea. Finishing up today with Boil and Drink, Old Paka, Liu Bao, and Fu Tea. So I'm really excited to dive into those. I'm just going to uh, fast forward down to that section. Sorry for the blur on your screen as it whizzes by. <sighs> wow, that's really nice. This has more uh, the, 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 the more. wood, the, 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 mm. the camping smell comes out more. I don't, I didn't just, yeah, Here I didn't taste much of that initially. We haven't tried this tea for a while. Actually. It's been a while indeed. We, it so gets deeper. I was yeah. super excited to drink this tea today. Why? Because if you guys have been following along with our other lives, we have recently had Qianliang Cha, very recently, because of our tea and stress session. We had Qianliang Cha, okay? And I think we had it twice, right? Because YouTube, mm -hmm. YouTube went blackout on us for one of the sessions. Mm -hmm. So we had two rounds of that. No, that was Tianjian. That no, we, Tianjian, yes. Right, and we've recently had Tianjian. Um, and so these are the, these, oh. those are the three teas in our Tea Master process set. Tianjian, right. Tianliang Cha, and Fujuan. So mm. uh, when I noticed that, I was super excited to actually try the third one here. And um, I put some links down below to that set and to a mm. review that Tea and Spoons, our friend Connie did a review of that. Uh, tea. She's got a great website with all kinds of teas on it, but she actually did a review of that set. So I put that link down below. I put the link to that Tea Master process set. The good thing about that uh, set is it all mm. comes from the same producer, yes. same uh, location, same, uh, same garden. So we really uh, minimize when we uh, create right. a set, it really minimizes other variants in terms of what affects the yeah. taste. That's so why we call it the process set because right. it's the, you know, basically all your, you know, all your tasting is the process difference. Mm. Mm, really, and that's a really fun learning experience. I would also put the link, I think I put a link to the Fujuan Premium down below too, which unfortunately we're mm -hmm. out of stock. But if, but you can sign up to know if we get some more of that. It's really fun also to taste this and tea. And these all come from the uh, the royal, the old royal tea garden of mm. those tribute teas. So the Tawar is prime for this dark teas. Mm. The place is called the Gao Ma Er Xi. It, it's interesting. The naming it means the Gao River, Gao Brook, Xi Brook, Tu Brook, Gao Ma, Tu Brook. That's their location name. Gao Ma. 
Mm. Yeah,、That's、basically, a- it's a call. It's like calling Ottawa the Ottawa.、Uh, what's the other river? Laurier. Ottawa Rideau.、Uh, yeah, call that the Ottawa Rideau Two River. Yeah,、Rather、we actually. It city, it's it's maybe、there. not as weird as you think. We actually have.、Um, just go back to this.、Mm-hmm. We actually have a city in Quebec called Trois Rivières, which、oh, is where three rivers、right. come out. You're right. And、um, there are other places in North America called like Two Rivers or something. I guess it's just an old way of naming. Yeah, yeah, it's places. pretty. That's right. That's right. All right, guys. So that was interesting. So jumping back over. Chocolate. Yeah, this one. This is, is always, an interesting chocolatey, not,、yeah. like uh, not like a not like a wee like a malty, not dark, different. Yeah, yeah. It's not skimmed. It's like almost not not cocoa powder, just the cocoa,、mm. not the chocolate or something like that. Yes, yes. Like almost like a, cho- a cocoa shell would even have that. It's not chocolate. Just like chocolatey. A, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A hint, and you're right about the.、Um, it's not. Campfirey like the log cabin Tianjin,、no. but it has a little bit of that. Somehow the smoke in there a little bit.、But. All right, guys, boil and drink old paka. Brewing difficulty: easy to learn. Difficulty: four stars. Brew tea tasting season: winter. Not surprising. Special puar old paka. First, old paka is the traditional health tea of Samao Hani race of Yunnan. Paka is its traditional is its transliteration. It is also called old paka tea, which means old leaves. Old paka is called in Puar producing area refers to pick the old leaves of tea bushes, then boiled in the kettle to destroy the activity of enzyme. While the leaves are wilt, take them out and dry up. Then the air dried tea is old paka. It can also be placed on a little charcoal grill. This will help old paka reduce all the fragrance while drinking. So I'm going to stop here because I was super excited about this section. Because about two sentences in to the second paragraph, I realized this is actually a tea I've never had, which makes me really want to try it. And I also wanted to mention to you guys the link to the finished translation is also down、oh, below.、Right. So if you guys want to jump down there and pull up the finished translation in English. You'll be able. You, it's sometimes fun to follow along with that. You can see what what's on the page now here in front of us,、mm-hmm. and you can see what we kind of came up with. So anyway, I'm going to unpack these paragraphs. Para one was pretty much perfectly fine by me.、Uh, old paka is the traditional health tea of the Hani people of Yunnan,、um, mm-hmm. and it's a transliteration. It means old leaves, kind of thing. Para two, it was a little bit. Tricky, but here's what I got out of it. It seems that they're describing the process for making this tea, which is actually boiling mature leaf. So something further down, you know, we're used to buds at the tip, or maybe one bud with five leaf for oolong, or a bunch of you know newer leaves for oolong. I don't think that's what we're talking about here. I think we're talking about pretty darn mature leaf, and we boil them as a process beginner, and then we dry them, and optionally we give them a little roasty to get out the fragrance, which isn't uncommon. We've heard of that with Of course, I'm sure it's a very different kind of roast, but we've heard of that with white tea. We've heard of that with green tea. We've heard of that with oolong. So that's what I got out of paragraph two. How did I do, boss? Well, you get most of the stuff right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think.、Uh, yeah, your very first of the translation is not a very bad here. It's actually pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. A little bit chunky, but understandable. And you can do a lot of、uh, adjustments as you are used to it. Paragraph one. I think I want to point out about small honey rays.、Uh, it's like、uh, not very clear what's going on. Okay. Small and、uh, small is a place in、mm-hmm. Yunnan. Old, right now, you, if you search, there's a poor city. Old times by old, I mean just uh, uh, just maybe a few decades ago. No, not even. Not even.、Uh, yeah,、oh. like ten years ago or some. Just before poor become popular, it was called small. Uh-huh. Even though Puar is an old region, but it's different. But at that time, it's called Sumao. So once the Puar get popular, Sumao become a district in this Puar city. So they change the city name to. Doesn't mean dead cat, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I was pretty sure it didn't, but I love、yes. to throw those curveballs at her because it doesn't sound like dead cat at all in Chinese. It's a、uh, the pinyin is similar, but the tone is different. Right. <laughs> Honey、so, is the people. Honey is the people, right? Yes. Which we met. 
Yes. Right. If you check out our, I didn't put a link to this, but I will. I think we put a little video when mm -hmm. we went to uh, Pasha. Mm -hmm. That was that. There is a beautiful old the mother of our of the Pursuit producer there, even dressed up in her traditional outfit for mm -hmm. us. Very beautiful lady. Mm -hmm. Very proud of her culture in a very dignified way. It was just wonderful to experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's any. That was para one. Right. And the end of one, talking about old leaves, because when we talk about tea, especially touching poor area, when we talk about old, sometimes people think about old leaves, are the tree old, are the leaves mm. old, or the tea is aged old. I thought it might be gushu when I first started reading. Right. Mm. Uh, this is not uh, about aging the tea, tea age or the bushes, the tea trees age. It's about the plant. Uh, the leaf, where the leaf is. Imagine a plant is in the lower parts. It's not like you said, it's not mm. buds, it's not a young tender leaf. It's, not it's tippy. the mm. mature leaves mm. to the lower, like closer to the stand, closer to the uh, the body. The trunk. Of, the trunk, that kind of leaf. Or the main stand, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so in then the paragraph two, like you said, is mentioning about uh, how to process this tea. And um, you totally got that right. Mm. I just want to, it's a very interesting way to process tea. Really? Right? Yeah. This seemed, um, I wrote in my notes that this seemed like a little mini Kilgreen kind of thing. That, that is. Here. And uh, if you have uh, attended our, like uh, before the pandemic, we had a ta different uh, tastings and one of those were poor, where we touch more in terms of about a little bit of history and geography to see how the poor teas process get affected by its communication with the main, air, main China era. This keeps the old, this one is more of the old way. The mm. two reasons why they still remain that. First, the leaf is too old. Regular ways doesn't process that. It doesn't work as well. Right. You know, the leaf is too now tough. Now it's too tough and mature. Mm. You need to uh, have a fierce uh, interruption. It's like have a little shell, you know, more fibrous yes, the leaf. Yeah. You need to be That's tougher. That's a great metaphor, yeah. Yeah, so you need to put that in the boiling water. On the other hand, this is almost the very original way of how people drinking tea. If you are familiar with the tea history, wow. initially tea are not as beverage. It's as uh, like a veggie. We put it in porridge, so put mm. it, we boil them, right? So this is the original, almost the very uh, ancient way. You want to talk about authentic. This is sort of getting down to ancient authenticity, yes. right? Yes, and use oh. mature leaves. The, the, what we know nowadays about uh, loving that uh, younger, tender, the new shoes and stuff are talking about the uh, tasting grade, talking about uh, improve mm. what tastes better and right. stuff like that. For utility use, uh, first you don't care for local <laughs> farmers. Uh, s second, uh, they wanted the best thing to sell, to make mm. money. They drink mm. the not, cannot make money material. Right. Right. So. That's right, they want the nutrition and the benefit, just the raw benefit, and uh, and just need tea. Good stuff exports. Yeah. Wow. And I guess the old leaf also. I'm going out on a limb here. I'm not 100, percent but probably not as rich in volatiles, right? Anyway, not Different. for sure. Different. Yeah. Different. If you are drinking tea for uh, medical, not medical, but for more health, especially mm. for regulated blood to. Uh, blood sugar, blood um, pressure, those ones, uh, the older leaf, the better. Right, okay. Yes, okay. The, the, the nutrition wise is uh, richer in, uh, what is that called? Anyway, it's richer in those things that help right. with uh, our body. Like uh, you probably want a low grade uh, green tea rather than the really top grade green tea. Those are tasting great. Right. So when you're talking about taste, it's not about uh, this is the best for right, right. the health of the tea kind of thing. Cool. Mm. All right, so we'll finish. That was super interesting. I'm really eager to find this tea somewhere. Yeah, and that's why this tea has to be boiled because it's old, mature mm. leaves. You really need a lot of outside help to break that uh, fibrous outside right, shell right. kind of thing. I think they actually, so we're going to get to that. So mm. now we'll hit the last sections here. Appreciate always before drinking. Feature of shape, leaves are rough and old, but completed. 
Veins are significant, <laughs> light green, which I think is green. Whoops. Enjoy while tasting. The soup is bright and light yellow and tastes sweet and aromatic, mm -hmm. weak and soft. Mm -hmm. Tips for brewing. It is better to boil old paca. Only in this way can the leaves release all the special taste. Yeah. As you just said. So notes on this was just breen. Pretty straight up. Breen is green, I'm pretty sure. Light and green or green and it's not a green, it's a brownish green. Oh, a yeah. light brownish green. Yes. And if you talk, mm, like guess, here, yeah, Van mentions Van and stuff, you know, Van, it really just, uh, Vans are significant translated in what you know about tea is that these are mature leaves. Compared right. to oh, the same plant, right. the more popping the Van is, the more, the older, right, the more right. mature the... Yeah, that's right. You yeah. see that in veggies in the in the produce section too yes. if they're really mature they have those sometimes you even have to de-vein them because mm. the vein is pretty sinewy and yeah. tough right yeah. okay so and then enjoy while tasting the um, it seems like i have the only it's pretty clear it's just telling giving you a little a short and sweet mm -hmm. tasting note it sounds like it's got a profile similar to huang pian i wanted to ask yes you that. it is okay okay i was Absolutely. curious about that so that might give people an idea if they've ever had that. Yes. Um, the difference with Huang Pian is Huang Pian is the leftover of tea processing, a regular mm. puar processing, which it doesn't go through the, the rough oil process. Right. Uh, process. Right. But they're really similar in terms of the material. Those mm. are the older ones that uh, in general considered not a, a suitable for making tea. But they can still drink. That's why uh old times the locals usually uh, almost everywhere you go the farmers drink the low grade tea because they make they sell the good one to make right. money right sure so it's huang pian local drink now people also sell huang pian and uh, they have a similar characteristic lighting flavor which mm -hmm. is really friendly to new to tea people and uh, right. because it's light and it's sweet Mm. Yes, but yeah, it's, a little, it's quite lovely. Yes, it's a really friendly to people who just get into tea, but right. not as much. But in a tasting a, grade, it's yeah. also really empty, right? Yeah. There's really not much going on in there. Yeah. Beautiful picture. Look at this. The toasted rice is inspiring. I'm, to, I'm working on trying to make a toasted rice. Mead, mead. based on it. Oh, oh, that's a cool idea. So toasted rice mead based on it right so you'll probably we do i guess for that you would toast your own rice right um curious to know how that will work i think we chatted maybe with you about mead before or maybe with somebody else i think i think there maybe was a fellow in peterborough making mead too the, the um I'm, I'm blanking on his name i feel awful but the uh blacksmith If you can imagine. Mm. Anyway, cool. That sounds very cool. Curious to know how that's going to work. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and dive into Leo Bao. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Let's keep rolling. Um, oh, and we mentioned. I wanted to just before I do dive into Leo Bao. I think we mentioned a couple terms. We kind of ran right over them. So I want to back up in case we're, I don't want to lose anybody. And of course, as always guys, shout out in the um, comments if you have questions, if we say something that you don't know what the heck we're talking about, definitely shout out in the comments. I'm also experimenting with a Discord channel. So there's a link in the description below if that's something you're familiar with. If you join our, uh, the voice chat in Discord, I'm a little bit of a grandpa with this stuff myself, but if you join that, we will hear you, I think. Um, I think. I think. I think I got it set up so we'll hear you. And if we go to it, and maybe everybody will hear you. I'm not sure. I'm doing my best. I'm just trying to make it more easier for you guys to interact with us. But of course, if you're comfy with the chat and that works for you, throw your questions up there. But we talked about Huang Pian just now. And then you might be wondering what the heck is Huang Pian. I don't think we told anybody uh, what it is. Right. So let us just back up in case you're totally un, unfamiliar. I wasn't, but Huang Pian is basically the, I'll give it a shot. If I make any mistakes, maybe you correct me. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So we did in our video, if you check out some of our tea trip videos where we went over to um, in, in Yunnan, 
you'll see the, and a couple of them were helping some of the locals sift the, sift the finished the finished mao cha so we're going through the leaves and we're pulling out any yellowish brownish leaves that don't belong those yellowish brownish leaves are uh, huang pian and basically the reason they're yellowish brown is because they're a little they were a little bit older they got plucked and processed but they were they weren't quite um tender or young enough to receive the processing correctly so they're getting kicked out they don't throw them in the garbage they pile them up on the side and like jen said that's their local tea they have that because they can't sell it and the first time we heard that it, it was being sold we were you were shocked and I was shocked because I kind of now had learned where it came from. So we're like, oh, that's kind of weird. That's usually... Oh, because uh, in they the also real... Feed, they also feed the pigs with it, right? You feed the pigs, mm. you uh, compost that. It's uh, those things in factory yeah. that they just uh, swip. Yeah, there's tons of it. Swip it apart. It's just like a dust kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and it's not... Um, and like, you know, in the farmer community, right, they try not to waste anything. So that's why they feed the pigs. That's why they even brew it and drink it. It's not awful. It's got that sweet flavor. So that's what Huang Pian is. It's basically um, um, the stuff that got kicked out that wasn't, it's not good. Um, Usually, uh, real like a tea factory certified, certified like, you know, a, a government mm. rege uh, registered uh, factories, so they don't really... Uh, produce Huang Pian because it's just not a thing. Right, like, okay. Yeah. yeah, you mean like they wouldn't be sold for sure. No, no. Right, but they would they would have a sifting process and have that and just oh, get yeah. rid of it, right? Yeah. It would just be thrown out or whatever because they're right. a larger operation. Mm. Alex says something that I cannot read. Ni hao, me... oh. <laughs> Hello, friend. Cool, hello. All right. Yeah. Hello. So uh, there was another term, and if I remember what it was, I'll come back to that too. We bl we blasted right over one, and I, I was going to come back, but I'll come back. Or if you remember, just leave a comment down below if you're right. after the fact, or if we use it again. Here we go on to Liu Bao Cha. Sound effects by me. Liu Bao Tea. Liu Bao Tea is famous historical tea. After drying and storaging, it is visible to see many golden flowers, which is the yellow mold. It is good for improving the tea quality. It can secrete amylase and oxidase that catalyze the starch in tea into monosaccharide polyphenol oxidation. These could make tea concentrate to reddish brown, eliminate rough green flavor. Mm. Shape, the end. I'll just finish it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shape, the entire tea is in, a, is in a cylindrical shape. Color, black, brown, oily, and bright. Soup, red, strong, and clear, and amber. Fragrance, savory and mellow. Bottom of leaf, maroon or brown. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I was pretty shocked when I read this because I'm familiar with gold flower. As we showed when we showed you the tea at the beginning, I'm familiar with gold flower in, um, in Fujuan. So I didn't... So at first I thought, oh my gosh, they mixed up the two sections because right after this is fu, is fu Cha. So I thought, oh, maybe there was an editing error and they got them mixed up. So I jumped over to Fu Cha and I ran. I'm like, no, no, this isn't mixed up. And, um, and I, I just, I, so I was thrown off by this big time. Okay, big time. I was just like completely like, I didn't know that. And then it just goes all chemistry on me here. And I'm just like, <laughs> don't know what's going on. So basically my notes say, so confused. That's it. I'm so confused. I, uh, and I know Leo Bao. So the only other note I can tell you about with Leo Ba that I, that I thought of was in 2019 Cha Ren magazine, the magazine we do almost annually when there's not a global pandemic. Um, I put a link to it down below and there's a great article about Leo Ba in that magazine called The Three Musketeers of Leo Bao. Um, so um, you can uh, check that out. Uh, in the link below, but this one just threw me for a loop. I'm gonna have to turn to you for some help because I'm lost. Gold right. flower? Yes. So, first, let's kick out those uh, not very important, quote unquote, not very important parts sure. for uh, those chemical parts. Would you understand that? It, like, is it, that understandable? Okay, Cause I, 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 I finished the translation. Okay. What you translated was was still, it made more sense because it was fixed. But oh, it, oh, I, oh, I really refer to this because I had no idea I how to that. say I, it I, I had to English. fix oxidation and okay. I put polyphenol oxidate, oxidase. 
I think that's what she meant there. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't help me much either. I didn't I don't even know. I can't right. even say that yeah, like that's right. I don't polyphenol my, transfer into other oxidized compound like I don't know how to like can't, my chemical English is really bad. And you're right you know, though. Starch, in terms of I'm, understanding something useful, no. Okay. No, it didn't help me. Anyway, too much. just the it breaks down. It's my it overall. breaks down, transfers to other stuff. Mm. The starch become a single sugar, single sugar, mono. Alex something. says he didn't realize we will have school flour either. I know we're still in the chemistry section, yes. but yeah, I know Alex. I was like, what? I was totally freaked out. <laughs> I'm still freaked out. <laughs> yes. Um, so those are chemical stuff. Basically, those uh, uh, fun. Fungus, I think you call golden flower fungus, mm -hmm. right? Fungi, fungi. Mm -hmm. uh, that helps uh, break down certain chemical compounds in tea and transfer that and making the the taste mm -hmm. as well as the, the the liquor color and stuff uh, different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the gist of it. If you want to look up the individual word and know how this works, you can you know do yeah. that on Google. I really. I would love I, to dive into I this sometime with with some maybe get some guests on and who know this stuff inside Absolutely. out. That would be so fun because tea Absolutely. is super interesting chemically. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter if you understand it in order to be able to taste it and appreciate it and appraise it. Yes, but it yeah, just from a nerd perspective, I find that super interesting. Absolutely. Then let's go back to the uh, Jinghua, the golden flower thing. Too crazy. <laughs> Too crazy. Come up here. So. What so, does this mean? Honestly, talking about the AHT, the very first, almost the very first tea that has the aging, the better is not poor, it's Liu Bao Cha. Mm. It's a very well known local, as a, you gotta put it and let it age, the order, like a poor kind of a borrow. Besides the Shu Puar technology, technology, the skills to make a Shu I think technology is totally fine. Right, okay. Yeah. They also borrowed this concept to realize that, that could improve their taste as mm. well. Mm. And so, and the golden flower is not, how should I say this? Golden flower is not specialized to Fujuan. Okay. However, if for those teas to have gold flower, they're usually dark tea and aged for years, which means ah. they're extremely rare. So <laughs> right, because people drink them up. Yes, and nobody stored tea before, right? So mm. it's really rare. But uh, so in really old uh, aged teas, you will see some gold flower, like okay. the Banyan Songping we had. They also have a oh. little bit of gold flower. What's the difference? Is Fujuan now you buy that from this year, so like the twenty twenties? They has gold flower because there is a step of uh, encouraging them to ah, develop in the okay. tea. None of the other teas have that step, and it, right. And so it's basically to naturally occurring. Naturally yeah. occurring, and the 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 density is much much lower. Right. Now you can cut up a fujuan and uh, look well, inside. I showed you guys. Let me come back to that. I'll just show right. it again, um, just to show you again. I showed it earlier. So right. it's just I can't really fast forward this, but in a moment we're going to go to where I break it open, and you right. can already see it there at the that edge. yellowish. Uh, see, the, there it is. It's at in the little clusters edge. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it has those, mm. but uh, when you see a natural one, and especially if it's in the Puar or Liu Bao, those teas has to be like uh, at least uh, 30, 40 years, really old teas and there that it is, like, super is almost abundant there. Yeah, and that would be very sparse a little bit a little bit yeah you'd have low. to pay attention to yeah. see it right like before and also fujuan if you look at if somebody is selling super old fujuan it wouldn't have the same uh the the density of a golden flower this making fujuan packed with golden flower mm. is also a very recent uh innovation right right like 10 uh, decades ago and the stuff even though fujuan has that it's new and have some still a little bit those are more uh, i don't want to say natural because they could make that sound like uh, the kind right. of one it's not, it's not like natural. It's getting those are natural anymore. just the way they're doing it it wasn't so much right. and in early times the studies on 
uh, Golden Flower wasn't so prolific and it's not so well known. I was going to well say known. that's the reason they're now yeah now it they're going crazy. This Gold Flower, the the scientific name is Eurodium cristatum, I believe. Mm. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right, but um, so this has been quite extensively studied in uh, certainly in Japan and China and possibly even in the West as a really uh, healthy little fungi for your body in terms of um, sugar, um, sugar handling, hypertension, hypercholesterolia, whatever it's called. It's in the translation, the real word, and um, hyperglycemia. Mm. Kind of a preventative natural treatment. Right. So I think the takeaway from the paragraph vis-a-vis -vis what I just said is don't expect here. too much gold flour. Don't expect a gold one. flour in Liu Bao. This is in just the modern a, Fujian context, yes, especially. Yes, right. this is really like a, a age one that we as normal tea drinkers wouldn't see in the right. market at all. Kind of scenario. Got you. Got you. Just to say, the really old those dark teas could have those. Right, really. In, okay, so that's why I was so thrown off because it's a different, it's a different level of uh, Jinghua, gold flower or yes. Eurodium cristatum. It's yes. just a naturally occurring, super old, yeah. and it finally gets some traction. Mm. Mm. Very interesting. Let's jump out and have some. Uh, there's lots of uh, comments. Let's have a look. Mm. Um, so, um, oh man, I've never tried Liu Bao before. Must try this one. Uh, yes, really good tea. I love it. Um, check out our article in Cha Ren too. There's a bit of interesting, uh, there's some interesting stuff about Liu Bao and its kind of evolution. And, and we've noticed that too. We've, Absolutely. We had it four years ago, which I really, really loved. I, I really missed that tea. We had it more recently, which was really good tea too, but it's hard to find the, um, like Jen mentioned, Liu Bao was, uh, before they were aging Puar, Liu Bao had the notion that before you drink it, it's kind of five years old, right? In the mm -hmm. bamboo, mm -hmm. stored in a bamboo cylinder mm -hmm. for five years before drink. And um, I think because of market pressure, that seems to be falling. Oh yeah, yeah. the whole dark tea old times are really slow in pushing out. Mm. Like uh, nowadays, they're really trying to make everything almost instant to drink. But right. uh, usual, like old times, like uh, the say Qianliang Cha is huge, right? It's a huge right. log. The log, It yeah. takes a couple of years to dry. <laughs> so they, they put that there a couple right. of years later on. Two years later, when it's fully dried, they start to ship it out and stuff they like that. They slice it the, up, the ship it out, The whole yeah. dark, they don't slice it up, but they ship oh, the whole thing out. The whole log. Oof. Yes, that's like the, the old time, the dark tea rotation of the time is really slow and it, nobody is in a hurry, right? Uh, nowadays, when it's more popular, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a pressure to have the latest. Yeah. Not to mention, the most people still have the notion trained by green tea. We want the first ones, we want, you know, the early right. ones, we stuff. It's so a shame. It's, they, yeah. should, they should learn from whiskey and just stay in the rhythm. Stay in the rhythm. Let that sit for not 12 years, but like five years. You know, that stuff is gold, mm. really gold. Okay, so um, then, um, uh, what is Jedi Minas Kontrimas says, very interesting, thank you. You're so welcome. We do this to, uh, if you have any questions or anything, just shoot them out. We do this just for you guys. Alex says, oh, I also didn't realize Liu Ba has golden flower. Yes, I know, right? I was like, what? And, um, and when we showed the video, I think you saw the gold flower even zoomed out. Yeah, it's pretty mm -hmm. obvious. And then it's up to you to read the next one. But I agree with him about the Fubric being very oh. relaxing. He asked is, uh, is there any difference between uh, in, te in terms of the taste between Liu Bao and uh, Fu Zhuan. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Even like the that. liquor color. I'm going to go to the tea cam. Mm -hmm. uh, let me get to the, the brew cam. This is uh, hard to describe. Yeah, this is, but you can see just from the liquor color, this is an amber, an amber goldish. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. focusing. Let me try this. There, that pulled it in a bit. Oh, that nice. pulled it in nicely. So an amber gold liquor with a little bit of cloudy. Mm -hmm. uh, Leo Bao, in my experience, has been typically um, more to the... A little bit darker? More like a, yeah, like a bit more, yeah, definitely like a darker amber and sometimes hinting at a ruby a bit. Yes, yes. So, um, and um, the tastes I found are quite 
different. I mean, the Fujuan is really different, yeah. like uh, imagine Liu Bao is more closer to the Shupua taste mm. than to Fujuan or yeah. any of hints of, of like a sweet bamboo almost. Like yeah, you can sometimes bamboo, taste that bamboo the flavor. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, so great question there. And um, how old is the Liu Bao you are drinking? We're drinking Fujuan actually right mm -hmm. now from twin i'm not sure i'm, I'm not going to even try to make it up Me either i forgot 18 years we haven't aged He's no that's chile on child that's aged so it's a few years old we're going to go with a few years old as our official it's on our website answer. oh yeah. yeah and i showed the website there so the link is down below in the description mm -hmm. so if you pop over to the website scroll down and open the additional info mm -hmm. the year of harvest is right it there it has to look at the color it's yeah let's it oh, has you. a little age there so yeah, it's darkening down a bit, yeah. huh? From the, yeah, uh, it has that more reddish tone, like from yellow to more orange. Yeah, throw it back up in here. Does it work? I don't but know. But I guess you can I'm gonna see try the... It. I gotta get better at this camera thing. It's, there we go. If, yeah. Yeah, so you can see it's getting a little darker with age. Um, JS mm. asks, do they have techniques that make the tea comparable without the aging? Like what they are trying to do with scotch. Hmm, I didn't know they were trying to do that with scotch. What does that mean? What it means is basically, tea it's, comparable. yeah, what, without the aging. It's what, shu, it's why Shupuar exists. Uh, oh, yeah. Which is not totally answering your question, but the Shen Shu story goes something like this, right? Um, used to take a long, 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 long time for the tea to get from where it was made to where it was going because it was the old tea horse road, really long, really treacherous, really humid, bad weather on the backs of horses, etc. I'm paraphrasing super quick. So the tea got there and people loved it. They got used to it and then conditions improved and travel and all of that stuff and the tea started arriving really quickly and they're like, what's wrong with the tea? And the answer was nothing. It's just getting there faster. It wasn't having time to ferment and oxidize and age on the long, treacherous trip. Maybe get dropped in a brook or whatever. Um, only half kidding about that, but yeah. So they came up with the Shupura process, again, bo borrowed from um, Liu borrowed from Liu Baocha to kind of simulate that age. And so you ended up with Shupua, and you, you've if you've tried aged Shempuar and you've tried Shupuar, you can be the judge of how successful it was. I think it was successful in the sense that Shupuar is great. They really it, improved the taste in terms of the softness and mm, stuff. Oh, absolutely. It, it totally rotates the flavor of, of a young Shen. Mm -hmm. But compare an aged Shen, I don't know, 10, 20 years with a Shupuar, I don't think it's successful in that regard because you can't cheat age. And I suspect you'll find this. I don't know anything about the Scotch phenomena, but I bet you it will be I'd the like same. To know more about I would that. love to know more yeah. about it. So if you guys can shoot us a, a shout out on social media or whatever, where we can f dig into this whole, um, I don't want to say fake age Scotch, but you know what I mean? It's still interesting, regardless of whether or not it works. Sometimes something really, just like Shupar, sometimes something really great and tasty happens. So would love to hear more about that. So what was the question again? Uh, is there techniques? Yeah, I, so I don't know with the other teas, with dark tea, I still don't think they have that same gravitas that Puar has for that kind of thing to be done. Sorry, but where are you? I, I just, my mind went a little bit off. I was like, now if I go a little bit expanded from that question of uh, is there, uh, you know, without the aging, there are tons of fake cells out there that are trying to do that just so cannot mm. succeed that's a great vector to look to like they're trying to sell an aged right. shampoo arm and do some tricks right mm. but however in terms of cannot succeed is uh, who says cannot succeed they right. successfully sell those fake teas to a lot of people and make people think that's how aged it is it, at some point it's kind of succeeding and only people who know what the real one tastes right, like right. would know that uh, this just uh, fake the clothes but cannot fake the core of right, the tea right yeah because like you were you've said that there's some high-end and you don't get those kind of fakes over here but some high-end fakes in china that are pretty decent drink the only bad thing about it is it's not true mm. <laughs> it's and there are lots of ways people trying to do that mm. rent a boat get the tea on the ocean for a couple of months or 
uh, ran the uh, uh, deepen the 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 places where you sellers? shelter from bomb shelters bomb or, shelters or sellers were bomb shelters or sellers yeah bomb yeah. shelters uh, to get the flavor stuff lots of those I things love happening. the spirit I love the way you understood the question too though and I love the spirit of the question because maybe rather than put so much effort into quote unquote faking an age just have a call that a new process and sell it as something novel and unique this is a well it's all about what you sell that for the right? end price right yeah. right not right. the price and what you are exposed to the people who are purchasing right, right so do they have techniques there we go so that's that's that answer mm. and then alex says thanks for answering my question i will look at the charan magazine cool thanks alex Tea looks very beautiful. I would love to drink Fujiwan with you, but all my tea stuff is packed right now. Ooh, hopefully you can get unpacked soon. Liu Bao for me, woody, pine, earthy, and uh, mm. dry leaves flavor. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thanks Igor for those tasting notes. Those are I bang, agree. I bang agree. on, bang on. Yes. Um, and uh, I'll try to find a good write-up and send along. Send it along. Okay, for the scotch thing, oh, JS cool. is answering saying um, Glenn Livet Founders Reserve is a good example of scotch tea that was uh, scotch <laughs> scotch <laughs> that was uh, made in response to the demand not aged the same way as traditionally but still very well regarded mm. Mm, I think we can find that so maybe we'll go we'll head over to our local uh, liquor store right, uh, right and see if we can grab some of that I like that I like the transparency I don't mind yes. the new things or trying things out to improve I just don't like how Yes. That's why I call them fake. It's not no, because uh, totally I'm agree. Yeah. New and I think Glenn Livet because of their long uh, long reputation are more are transparent just because they've got so much much more right. to lose than to gain. Right. By doing and and innovation is awesome right. when it's transparent. Mhm. Mm and Alex says, "Wow, <laughs> I pay big bucks for a bomb shelter HT." See, that's what I was getting at. I was thinking like like there is an angle on that and you're right though. These fake HT sell for ridiculous prices if they succeed. Um, anyway. Yes. Yes. And Igor, Fujuan, milk with honey and pollen, like sweet nectar with some er earthy flavor too. Wow. Wow, pollen, I, might... I agree. The pollen, I think mm. uh, my translation is more of like uh, that uh, mushroom, the, the, the yellow powder, yellow powder, I mean the... the, the the gold, the, the gold flower mm. flavor has that pollenish. Yes, yes. Yeah. But with a hint of that mushroomy overtone. Mm, mm. Yeah, I love your copy. I might, uh, I might hit you up for some. Uh, I might steal some of your notes, Igor. Oh, that's really cool. All right, yeah. I'm shooting back to the book. Yes. And we are gonna head down to. Mm -hmm. Speaking of gold flower, I was so shocked to see that in the Leo Bao section. I'm really glad we covered that. I'm going to uh, see if I can move us a little bit. I'm going to jiggle down over here, guys. Right. Hello. Perfect. And we'll hit the footy. Mm. Footy. Footy. Because of that time, the raw materials were from Hunan, also known as Lake of Tea. Because of production in the dog days, it is also known as the hot summer tea. What's it's dog days? Anyway, go ahead. Hot days. It's perfect. Oh. Its fragrance, our efficacy, our its fragrance and efficacy are similar to Smilax Glabra, hence the name. <laughs> the functions of brick tea in lipid lowering, anti-diabetic, and anti-hypertensive have been verified and approved by the medical and tea profession. It also plays an important role on prevention and adjuvant therapy on the modern three highs. Okay, and I'll, shape is rectangular brick, as we saw in the little video earlier. Color is tawny. I love that color. I have to use that more. Um, I think that's almost like a malted sugar, like a oh. color. Orange and clear, the soup, fragrance pure, bottom of leaf, black brown, incomplete. Okay. So. So you call hot days dog days. Yeah, yeah, that's uh -huh. an older expression in English, but it's not wrong. It's really, uh, really good. Yeah, dog days are those hot, humid, just oppressively hot days. Oh. All right, so the first one, I was like, this is was actually wasn't so bad, but I couldn't get over this Smilax to Calabra. It sounded like from a <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy uh, uh, character. <laughs> Right, okay. shoot out the name if you know the name of the guy I'm talking about. The guy who um, 
had, I think he had two heads and everything, but if you know who I'm talking about, shoot his name up in the comments. I cannot remember the Hitchhiker's Guide character who has a name similar to Smilax Glabra, but there is one, I'm sure of it. Um, <laughs> You're sure of it. Okay, I think what I want to explain is the name. This, the here it uses quite a, uh, it kind of explain the name of land. Fu Cha, so Fu Oh, and we, by the way, oh. in that name explanation, I didn't really understand a thing. Oh, right. Uh, raw material were from Hunan. I don't know yes. why is Fu equal who. Uh, lake of tea, I don't know what yes. that means. Um, so, Fu Cha, okay. Uh, so, uh, it has a quite a history. It's uh, a, a origin, you can say Hunan, but you can also say Shanxi, different province. Because early times, oh. the origin of this specific tea, what they made was in Jinyang, in Shanxi province. But then they don't have the tea there, so they kind of import the tea from Hunan province and uh, produce and make that into brick. And those are people who do a lot of businesses all the way to the east, uh, sorry, west. So they then they kind of a secondary process of the tea, make it into shapes and all that and sell that out. So the, by the West, we're talking about um, even more border. Um, they could go all the way to Middle, Middle East, East or right. something. Okay. Yeah, so, those are a bunch of people who do, they're business people. Right. Old times, traditional business people. So they're people. getting it in from Shanxi? They're no, do, no, no, oh, from Hunan. From Hunan. The material comes from Hunan. Pack it into bricks yeah, so and shapes. Yes, so you could see, uh, sometimes you will know Fuzhuan comes from uh, the origin, they could to uh, Shanxi province rather than Hunan, okay, okay. as a lot of people know. So, but because of the or at that time, the material comes from Hunan province, so it also known as a Hu Ti. Here it translated, make that word, so lake of tea is like what? No. Oh, that is Hu Ti. Hu means Hunan. Right. So a Hu Ti. Yeah, so Simplified. in the Finnish translation, that was really clear. I noticed the way you, I missed all of that. Right. So if you're following along in the Finnish translation, it's all, it's all there. Right. Then, second, it also known as a Fu Cha. Could you please highlight this character yeah. and this character? Fu Cha. Yes. You notice Fu if cha. you just compare, those look really similar. They pronounce identically in Chinese, like Mandarin, but uh, they are different characters. Fu are in oh, different characters. minor, minor difference yeah. in the first the character. The first one, uh, the second one here, this one, uh -huh. is similar to this one, which means hot days. Those are, we have a period of a summer that is considered oh, the hottest day, usually in is. July and August. Okay, we call yeah. that, yeah, Fu Tian. That's why it's called Fu Cha. Even though, in like, if you just hear that, it's identical to the first one, which is on the title. But that's why it's also known as a not, because it has other right, written form. This mm. kind of explain why it has other wow. written form. Okay. Then the third one tell you why it's written in Chinese as the first one here. This guy here? Yes. This is it's Fu Cha, the one we know, used yes. today, modern. Yes. All of those are still in use. So just, They're not wrong. I just want to follow up. So the first one is Fu Cha. Mm -hmm. This is Fu Cha as well. Mm -hmm. Can you shoot same me Same pronunciation. Same. Okay. So Identical pronunciation. Okay, but, you'll, but did you guys notice there's a little, little difference? There's a little tick in the middle of the second part of the radical. Yes. That goes, so I didn't notice that at all. And, and maybe Alex noticed because he was writing Chinese to us earlier. So you may have noticed that, but I don't know if anybody else would have noticed that. So this is really, I'm super stoked. This is super interesting <laughs> for me. Right. So why the second one, why the common known Fu Cha has that little head in front on top of it? Because it's a aroma and it's a function, like oh, a tea, the house around. function is similar to Fu Ling, which is a Chinese herb called Poria. Some people would buy those like a super, it's a mushroom that grown mm, uh, because mm. of the tree. It grows on trees. It's a really good uh, mushroom. Used in Chinese medicine, mm, right? Chinese medicine, mm. yes. So that's why it also has a written form as a Fu Cha. Like the, the second one. one. This the, Fu the, Cha. No, this oh. one has the hat. You see, oh. this is the hat. This is Right, this fooling. one has the hat. Yeah, that's what. It's a little bit complicated. All I'm saying here is this tea has different written forms and slightly different names. 
And um, it, yeah, it wasn't wrong, Alex. Alex just piped in. Oh, I had mm. the wrong character for Fucha, and I guess what we learned is not really wrong. Oh, that I think he refers to the the his oh. typing. Yes. Right. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is super interesting. So this is the kind of stuff that it's a little bit tangled up. It's a little bit messy. It's a bit hard to follow. I hope you got it, but. Right. This is the you essence, don't, don't the essence <laughs> of Sunday Tea Book right here, right? Is those little differences. It's not a big deal if you if it's not your thing, but if you're into this, I'm just jazzed, guys. Right. And uh, uh, I think that that's the complicated part of this. Then you talk about how good it is for all the health benefits and stuff. Right, which is all a uh, real deal. So. And by real deal, I mean it's not um, it's not anecdotal. It's actually science studied. Um, Asia, a lot of Asian science done on the uh, Jinghua, the Uradium, U Uradium cristatum. Mm. I don't know if, mm. again my pronunciation, but the Jinghua, fu uh, the yellow, the gold flower. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna pop out. Uh, you guys shoot up your questions. I'm gonna pop out and see if there are any questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, what have we got here? Igor says Fu Cha is only from Hunan province, only in bricks. Mm. Igor asked that. Mm. Uh, usually in bricks. Usually in bricks. Right. I guess you like, never know. Like any tea, you, you can press that how you want. Yeah, but bricks is a more traditional way. They could make it small and the brick is how they do the golden flower process too. So Right. Uh, yeah, mostly you will right. find. Uh, however, though, I want to mention if you buy our food ties in 25 gram, it's not 25 gram leather brick. bricks. We break we, that up. That's right. But that's it, a great clarification. Because, uh, yes. So because it comes in uh, like a kg, uh, a kg or a bigger quantity, mm. and it's not how uh, here in North America people would usually yeah. purchase. So we break that into smaller, yeah. uh, smaller quantity. That's right. Yeah, and uh, is that yeah. only from Hunan province? Um, so old times is from uh, Shanxi also have that. Jinyang mm. also have uh, Hu, uh, Fu Cha. Jinyang. 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 Yeah, and uh, Hunan also have that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's old time. So now again, Gen they're still still trying to revive it because they are the quote unquote inventing place wow. okay. of uh, Fujian. But wow. because uh, there's uh, some transfer transfer, like uh, they changed the location of production back, and there there's some uh, history there. Right. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and then JS is, uh, says he just wants to double check and make sure we're not confused, okay, which okay. is good because you did yeah, clarify yes. something. He said, I want to make, get a, I want to clarify. Basically what he was talking about is the Scotch distillers making bottles that have no age statement on the label. So they're not yes. vintage. So they're, yes. yeah, but they're still going for great flavor. Got you. So this allows, he continues, what this allows is for them to mix from several batches of Scotch like from very young, three years mm -hmm. and older ones, mm -hmm. this allows them to make an entry level drink much faster. Right, mm -hmm. right, and they don't, right, right. So then they normally would. It's not compared to the high end, it's not com compared to the high end stuff, but it is still regarded as decent quality. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's exactly what they do in poor. So, mm. except a lot of cases, when they mix, they sell that for the stuff. They you sell know, that as if it, as if it's really yeah, aged, or right. sell that uh, sometimes they they mix a little bit and sell that as aged shen pour because a lot of people cannot mm. tell shen from shu when it's aged, mm -hmm. so they took advantage of that. Yeah, I we've really got first love hand experience they, with um, seeing some some yeah, aged shen pour with a really old date on it. Yeah, it but you look at the. I don't even shupuar. need to buy those. I just uh, look at the pictures. They're for sure just shu mm -hmm. so it cannot mm -hmm. be real. But I really love that how transparency you know right. it's okay like you and all times uh, before the whole craziness about aging poor and all right, that right. people do that the factories yes. produce that because that indeed improve the young taste and yes. nothing yeah, wrong it, with it make it. a drinkable tea today yes. right Just nowadays mm. they start to uh, you know yeah. not yeah. very 
what is it? They um like blending Shen and Shu once yeah. Shu was on the scene, right? That Absolutely. wasn't that wasn't sort of an uncommon, and it wasn't. They weren't trying to do any trick. They're just yeah, trying they to can, make... they mix that in a good ratio that you can drink, or they mm. semi uh, like a partially uh, sh uh, get the fermentation process and make that um, more drinkable quicker. Like all those are good stuff. Just needs to be like whiskey, transparent. Tell people right, right. be clear what it is. Hey, not. good news. Alex says if you're into port, I believe there is something called late bottled vintage, which is a, he thinks is a similar idea. So we've got mm -hmm. some uh, we got some drinking to do. Um, cool, very cool, guys. Very cool. So um, hmm. it's a really interesting. I don't think this is a, like. A, uh, yeah. No, I was just thinking why they could be so good and be so transparent and why is the tea market so chaotic uh, it's a big topic to think about but yeah it's I, really interesting at a certain point it's money related right that's why you when you talk about fine arts and mm. real pieces antiques there's also fake stuff i guess i don't know you guys can shoot up you saw your thought yeah, that would like be interesting why, to see why why yeah, why I think I maybe like, more artisanal too. Like these these labels and makers have serious consequence if they get busted, right? They're mm, they're global. Like you're uh, right. he was you're talking right. about. Uh, you're right about Glen Livet. That's a huge global brand. Like they have a lot. And to it's lose. a brand. Like a, mm. Mm, I I always wanted to do a topic on, you know, individual farmers vis-a-vis -vis proper tea factories. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of um, conf not confusion, misunderstanding or mm. imaginary those uh, Ro romanticizing. I think is a good that's word. That's right. For it, yes, right? but sometimes those are not quite just like, that. <laughs> Fantasizing, romanticizing. Well, I don't think it would be a popular topic for a lot. Well, we of should people, do it. We should do a, a live on it or do a video on it. I think it's a great topic, and you're right. <laughs> it, it might be unpopular, but I think it bears consideration certainly. Mm. Um, we touched on it a little bit in one of our, in our in a blog post uh, about uh, the biodynamic farm. Yeah. Uh, the the um, uh, Dansong, the Dansong producer, mm -hmm. who has a big operation, so. but it's very good stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So that sums up uh, this episode of Sunday Tea Book, mm -hmm. episode twenty one, and it also sums up dark tea. Uh, next Absolutely. week, I'm going to shoot up to the um, back to the table of contents, mm -hmm. and we will see. Take a little peek if I can get my mouse to work. There it goes. Take a little peek. Let me come back to the book. Yes. Yes. Look what's coming up, guys. Oolong tea next week, and it's a deep section. Mm. Uh, nice and deep. Lots of meat. Look at all of those teas, Phoenix. Uh, all those translations. All those I don't funny even translations. Know what talking about. Phoenix Unique Bush. I think that might be Dan's home. Yes. Um, Wee Cassia Tea. Iron Our Hat. What's uh, Our Hat? I have no idea. I have no idea what these are, but we're going to find out as we go through <laughs> uh, the Oolong section, which will take us through December. Right. So, guys. I think next week we're going to do the rough, like, basics of uh, oolong. If right. you're a oolong lover or tea lover, don't miss it. These are gold because yeah. many people kind of uh, know a little kind bit. Kind of about understand it, but oolong, but there's but lots not of Chris and Cross mm -hmm. that. Right on. You know, right on. That's the great thing about this book. Uh, the way Jian Li has approached it is, is professionally, in a, in a word. It's the basics aren't missed. And that's important because every now and then in our in our internet world of Google this, Google that, mm. um, you miss some of the basics. And this can be a, I don't want to say deadly, but it can be a, an unpleasant hole in your knowledge. Mm -hmm. It can really harm your sort of progress if you're if you're um, trying to, struggling to really leap forward in your knowledge of tea. So just before we sign out, I want to just check out these closing comments. A lot of oversight. There's a lot of oversight on a global scale. Additionally, there are oh, talking about right. why. Uh, additionally, there are there are aren't that many distillers. A vast majority of them are owned by three or four major companies. Mm, right. Also, I gotta say I'm really excited about your Discord. See you Ooh, there. Ooh, nice. Yeah, nice. pop onto the Discord. What I'm trying to do with the Discord, I'm gonna spend a minute on this because maybe I'm on. Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. I don't know. 
So my thought is this, YouTube Live is really fun, I love it. Mm. I love that you guys are chatting with us in the comments and we can read them back. But um, what I'm trying to do is something weird, and I don't know if anybody does this, and it's worked. Igor was with me and another person. Uh, I did an impromptu morning. So what I did was they jump on the Discord so they can talk. I hear it. I piped that back out to YouTube land so y'all hear it. I used an American word. So <laughs> you can all hear it. That's the Canadian version. So I managed to make that work. Um, Igor heard Fernanda speak she was in brazil he's in spain i'm in ottawa canada very cool so what what happens is it's like a one instead of typing you guys could say hey um what about this or i don't understand that what what does jinhua mean or whatever i would hear it and i'd say oh hey alex or i might not know who you are because i might not recognize your voice that's the bad part here at least i have your name but <laughs> you might say what's jinhua and i say oh good question jinhua is xyz and not only would i hear it but everybody would hear it but the the chat would only be one way for you. You wouldn't hear me on Discord, you'd hear me on YouTube. And I don't know if that's confusing for people. So let me know what you think about that. That was a really long way to say, you're only talking on Discord, but you're listening on YouTube. So let me know if that's too confusing. That's how I should have said it. <laughs> anyway, guys, this was episode 21. We're all, we're, all I'm doing is I'm trying, this pandemic doesn't seem to be ending. Can I speak a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem to be ending, so I'm trying to find ways to connect and get around and this. And we really miss that tea festival feeling that we are talking to people, not just face you to hear face, yeah. us, right? Yeah. We can also hear you. That's very valuable for us so too. So I'm trying to get that around the tea table. Even though you're at your tea table, I'm, an, I'm at mine. I want that feeling to be around the tea table mm. with you guys more. Mm. So uh, let me know what you think um, and how you think I might achieve that. Um, these are some of the things I'm trying. Anyway, love. I love being with you guys. I love that you guys joined us for Sunday Tea Book. And we will see you guys uh, next week. And until Thursday. I think. Oh, Thursday. You're right. We've got a... I got a presentation Yixing. coming up. You see yes, teapots on Thursday. Talking about Yixing teacup. Teacup. I mean, Yixing teapots. Like mm. Yixing in general. Not mm. necessarily just teapot. That's right. So if you're into that... Uh, Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, mm -hmm. we'll be talking about yeasting teapots. Next Sunday at 1 p.m., we'll be talking about Sunday tea book, oolong tea. Oolong and tea. I may jump on randomly to evolve the whole experience. Um, <laughs> so, you know, hit the notification bell if, you want, if you're want if you interested in those. The other day, it was like 7 in the morning. I jumped at the tea table. 7 in the morning. Yeah, uh, like at any time. So hit the notification bell if you're interested in that. And guys, until next time. Keep, Keep steeping. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.